And a warm welcome to all of you. Thank you for joining me. We're Conversations with Michael, our free live monthly webcasts here that we've been doing for quite a few years now. So let's all take a deep breath here as we settle into our our time together, our most sacred here time together. And of course, you're welcome to watch today's live broadcast either on our website on the Conversations with Michael page, or you can go to our YouTube channel. In fact, the link is right below the player on our website on the Conversations with Michael page. If you go to the YouTube channel, there is also a chat feature there. And if you'd like, you're welcome to uh, interact with a global audience that is tuned in live here today. So we invite you to join us for free on the first Friday of every month. And we stream live from our home studio just outside Portland, Oregon. The home studio is the place from which we now almost exclusively provide all of our online services and products. We've been serving since 1995 an integrated human soul relationship, and we offer a variety of different teachings in a variety of different heart based programs and services. So, those of you that are new to the teachings of Michael, feel free to check out our website. There you'll find a whole list of different things that are always going on here. It's a busy time here on Earth, and it's a busy time for us to be able to keep up with all the changes that are happening both internally and to a small degree externally. But a lot here to share, to allow everybody to to take a deep breath and keep up with the accelerated energy that is now here to serve us. Now, normally we use this time to make a few quick announcements of upcoming live events. But we've just recently upgraded our entire online class model. So before we turn this over to Michael, let's briefly talk about this new format so that each of you have an opportunity to participate if you so choose. You know, for the last, well, 10 years, we were really one of the first in our field to offer live online classes that also gave every attendee limited access to each recording. And usually that access was limited to 90 days. Now this was done for a variety of reasons, but mainly just to help participants keep the class material at the forefront of their lives. Why? because we are so easily distracted by our day-to-day -day reality, by life itself. So, it, uh, you know, some people ask, why not 120 days? Why not uh, another number here? Well, it really was specific to that 90-day period to remind you to keep on top of what was being offered, because a lot of times we just listen to the teachings mentally, but we really don't take the time to integrate what was shared. And for the most part, what was shared is energetic. So we decided to change this model to actually better serve the growing consciousness of all of our attendees. You know, it's clear to us that so many of you are starting now to embody a very unique relationship with the presence of your own soul. And so out of respect for the evolving nature of whom we have the honor to serve, we created a program called Masters Unplugged. And this is new. This is new. So in this program, Instead of purchasing a ticket for each event, you can now participate in any class for a small fee as a monthly subscriber. This gives every subscriber unlimited access to a variety of services 
including all of our live in-studio classes. So this essentially eliminates the 90-day limited access model we've been using for the last 10 years. It also changes the limited number of live attendees that in the past could only participate in each class. Right now inside this program, we are now streaming a variety of sold out in studio and classes, including the popular Sacred Life series that has over seven hours of live sessions with Michael and our most recent class, which was titled Our Last Abundance Workshop, Abundance Unplugged, Part 1 and Part 2. So now you can sign up for any of our upcoming classes as a monthly subscriber, including the one coming up on August 17th, Passion Allowing in You, on October 12th, The Masters in Human, and on December the 14th, Through the Eyes of Spirit. So this is a big change for us, as it is for a lot of you. There, there isn't any uh, page you can go to now on our website that is just specific to sign up for each individual class. Now you can participate in all of them just by being a monthly subscriber. So if you'd like more information, of course, feel free to visit our website, and there you'll find all the details on how to sign up and all the details as well on upcoming events as well as all the other services that are included in this new program. You know, the whole notion of using the term limit just doesn't seem to work at all with saying we want the unlimited presence of our soul to be in our body. And we couldn't have done this prior for a number of reasons, but mainly because, well, mainly because there wasn't that allowance to allow the soul to be present in the way that we're now seeing it. You know, we get it. Becoming a conscious creator of your own experience is a very, very intense experience. We know this firsthand. And all of us now are, well, we're now beginning to experience some of the profound benefits from Supper Choice. I mean, that's a pat on the back. That's, yay, it's about time because it's been a while, hasn't it, for all of us to have to go through so many challenges, so many obstacles, enduring so many distractions, to finally be in this place where now we're actually experiencing the benefits from such a choice. We know that for a fact, as I share with you my own relationship with Michael, and as Coco and I get to witness so many of you who are now sharing really a new sense of joy, something that we hadn't seen before in working with so many of you, a new sense of joy for the life that you are now choosing for yourself. That's a bold choice. That really is a bold choice. And it just makes our hearts sing. Having worked with so many of you that found so many obstacles in front of you to finally have turned that corner and now are allowing this life-altering, life-changing presence to now be in your life. So, Coco and I want to thank all of you for allowing us to be of service for over the last 25 years. And we look forward to the next 25 years with whoever comes before us. And because of your trust and support, it's made it possible for us to continue to share the wisdom that comes from Michael with a growing global audience of awakened humans. So again, thank you. And let's take a deep breath as we shift over to the very title of this program, this event, 
conversations with Michael, as he reminds me every single month. It's not conversations with Robert. So take a deep breath. <laughs> and indeed, the transition can be indeed as simple and as what? Without filters? We like that term. Without filters. I am, of course, Mikael, known to most of you as Michael. Greetings. It's my honor to be here, to be of service with each of you. We hope you find yourself where you would prefer to be in this experience you call human. We together, you, are literally moving at this moment into a new frontier, a new reality here on earth. Every single aspect of this human experience is being upgraded or replaced by two factors, your current and evolving technology and by the presence of consciousness. Our work with so many of you is primarily connected to your own state of consciousness. But you'll also be living alongside in the not so distant future what many of you would have considered to be taken from a movie script from one of your science fiction movies. Scary, perhaps. Unnerving, perhaps. Triggers some galactic memories of a repeat performance of the same issue, perhaps. But during these next two decades, the health and well-being of your biological body will be greatly altered as well as your global economy. And that has some benefits. And of course, as with all these changes, there'll be some challenges. One of the challenges that humanity has not been facing is their appetite for consuming life, which humanity has been doing on many levels for a very long time. It's not restricted just to humanity, but it is here on earth that all of life wanted to get really clear about how energy serves them. How energy is serving every single being in all of existence. So, you can look forward to many changes, and some of those changes will be celebrated, and some will not. The ones that will not be celebrated have a lot to do with literally millions of unskilled workers who will be replaced. By whom? Skilled workers? No. By robots. Robotics have slowly become an integral part of your life. And of course, this will continue to grow in well, in leaps and bounds, beyond anything you have ever seen before on this planet. Is that scary? Is that frightening? Not so much to so many that look forward to these changes, because there is benefits to all the benefits of this technology and how it relates to your health and well-being and how it relates to a, a quantum shift in how you relate to energy, money, resources. So many of you have been here many, many lifetimes wanting to rediscover a very ancient relationship to energy itself so as to break the tendency of needing energy outside of you You've come here celebrating in a variety of different lifetimes a new relationship, a new experience in your own life that had so much to do with how is life supporting you as an individual. 
And so these changes that you will see worldwide in the next two decades, we suggest you buckle your seatbelt because they'll be coming that fast. It is neither right or wrong. It's neither good or bad. But it will literally greatly alter how each of you are experiencing your own life on earth. Some of you will want to run away into the woods. But most of you will find that living alongside what you are living with right now, that the exterior form might change, but humanity, humanity itself without this technology was already in a kind of robotic trance state in a biological form. So let's take a deep breath there. Our work has more to do, at least with all of you, with those of you that have, well, you have consciously chosen to stay on this planet and to live alongside all these changes. We know for a lot of you, what you had hoped the changes would have become is not happening is not happening in the way that you wanted to see it. You'll have to befriend technology. And as we continue with our discussion here with all of you, you'll see the role that you play so that it is a type of befriending that's going on. Some of you might even play with some of these new tools. You already are in the form of so many of these computers and other devices that allow us to have this kind of communication. But for the most part, for those that are at the forefront as awakened human beings, the tools that truly interest you are the ones that have the greatest impact on your own inner reality. And that's the part that we've been playing with you. We've literally simplified how we can work with you by simplifying the inner environment between the polarized aspects of your own human experience, between the heart and the mind. The heart being represented as your female nature and the mind, of course, your male nature. But one part that has been in charge for so long that actually believes it is you, we call that part again your male nature, and it has been playing itself out using your own mind. Your mind has been trying to solve whatever problem you're facing for a very, very long time. And you'll notice it's continuing to do that, even as you awaken to a different state of consciousness. Your mind, without recognizing that it is also the one that has been creating the very problems that it's trying to solve, makes it kind of crazy, makes it literally crazy. And so the mind has assumed an enormous sense of responsibility to do what? To help resolve the problems in front of you by avoiding the solution that is also within you. So this dilemma that the mind faces is not a healthy dilemma. But it does one thing for your mind. It gives your mind a purpose. Because if there's something that needs to be fixed, your mind's on board. As long as there's something that needs to be solved, your mind is pretty content. It goes to work. 
keeps it busy doing things. But for any awakened human being, as each of you know, this presents the most awkward transition to becoming what? To becoming a sovereign creator of your own experience. Your mind has tried to consciously create your reality for you for a very, very long time. But it's connected to your past. Your mind doesn't know what sovereignty is because it's very much connected to a collective mental state of consciousness on this planet where sovereignty just does not exist. And so when we have been introducing to you a sovereign state of consciousness, it leaves your mind always scratching its head, looking up in the dictionary what the term sovereignty means, and looking for any living examples so as to believe it's actually real, true. And then when it looks at us, representing a sovereign state of consciousness, an individuated aspect of spirit itself? Well, it listens. It digests. It conceptualizes what that might end up becoming or looking like in a human experience, but it never quite gets it because it has no past reference. For your mind to get this, it would have to stop relying on your past as a reference point, and it's not capable of doing that. So that creates a dilemma. The mind then relies on a variety of human emotions in service to your awakened state to try to help you feel more fulfilled, hoping that you also see the value that the mind provides for you by being in charge of your life. Unfortunately for the mind, your awakening process revealed that you are not these emotions, that they were actually created by the mind itself in response to life. Life that has occurred, that did occur, that happened in your past and was perceived by a very limited ability to perceive life. The mind perceives your life and perceives your past with blinders on. It sees only what's right in front of you. It doesn't have the ability to see the broader picture. And because of that, it misses out on a variety of influences that did influence each and every one of your experiences that contributed to the beliefs that your mind created. But without being aware of the bigger picture, your mind has filtered all the contributions that came into each experience from these contributing factors. And so what happens to the awakened human being when they realize that you are not these emotions? Well, most of you would say to us, boredom begins to set in. If your life now is just a repeated pattern of triggering the very same emotional responses over and over and over again, You see, these emotions 
are hungry. These emotions need energy from outside of you. In your natural state, and this is not a judgment, and we are not suggesting that you stop doing this, but in your natural state where you don't need to take any energy from outside of you to support yourself, then you would need, not need to extract any energy from this planet, <clears throat> including food. Now, we have a ways to go, do we not, before we get to that place where you are completely sovereign. And for that to be real, that's the phase we're in right now, where you are allowing more and more of your etheric, non-physical light body to also be present in relationship with this carbon-based cellular structure you call your physical body. When that becomes more integrated, then you'll find that there is more than enough energy to support the body itself within the light of who you naturally are. And so this boredom, your mind has tried to its best ability to solve this dilemma by suggesting that you do a number of things, that you do make some changes in your life, even though the word change to your mind is like a four-letter word, it's invited you to change your relationships, change jobs, change careers, move to another city, move to a bigger house. Generally, everything is connected to changing the exterior reality that you're living in to relieve you of feeling bored. But for most of you that are at the midpoint or later in your life, you notice that it's still just you and your mind in a new city, in a new career, in a new house, perhaps in another new relationship. So from the outside in, your mind's right. These kind of changes do offer a sense of temporary relief from feeling unfulfilled. But once again, these conditioned emotions have an enormous appetite. They need to be fed. And your mind does a very good job at recreating your past over and over and over again. Let's take a breath there. So when any of you reflect on your life, you realize this kind of works because the benefit of just repeating your past it allows you to feel safe if you never have to venture beyond what your mind doesn't know. Because if you never venture beyond the parameters of what your mind doesn't know, your mind doesn't need to trigger that emotion called fear, anxiety, doubt, worry, concern. If you're not conscious that these are emotions all being triggered by your mind based on that four-letter word called change, then you end up just living your life in a reactionary mode, reacting to life over and over and over again. But we aren't just talking to a normal human being who is unconscious of what's going on inside of them. We're talking to the awakened human, are we not? 
one who has chosen to turn the steering wheel of life over to your heart. Wow. Wow. You can see how this is reflected in your exterior reality. You are seeing from a gender-based perspective more leadership and more responsible roles being turned over to woman. It had to start from the inside. There had to be a way to find resolution to this pattern of behavior that just keeps repeating itself. From the outside in, you see it as a reflection of what you're doing from the inside out. Still, very few understand how to relate to that from the inside out because the majority of women would be so honest to say, yes, now I am in a place of what's considered to be a place of power and influence, but who's directing my life now is my male nature, my mind. But for the most part, from the outside in, you'll see this shift more and more. And of course, if there is no relationship to the soul, then the male gender ends up feeling what? What well, ends up feeling displaced, feeling very insecure about its position in this world. Each of you have noticed your own mind's reaction to this choice, turning the steering wheel of life over to your heart. And from your mind's perspective, as it has been for thousands of years, for most men's perspective, that's about the worst choice you could ever make. Giving woman more responsibilities or from your own personal individual perspective, allowing your heart to guide your life. Without knowing what lies ahead, your mind simply isn't able to serve you as men have been asked to serve woman as your protector. But freedom has a way of changing everything. And that's where we are right now. With all of you. And with the rest of humanity. Because your heart must be free. If you're also going to allow it to now serve you. Well, we promise you. And we have promised you, both from the inside out and the outside in, that's going to really trigger some frightening responses within you. Most from the outside in, most women have been saying for thousands of years, what is the threat here? What is it that you see in me as a woman that is so threatening to your security, to your control, to your sense of power, and that is it. The need to be in control, the need to be or the need to feel that you do have power over others. If you haven't gone inside to take ownership of how your emotions have power over you, Then you knew the next best thing. You make it an external battle. You see that reflected in the world outside of you right now at this time in the most uncomfortable way. You see politicians that have a very insecure but dominating power based type of personality taking control taking power. 
And this is unsettling. It feels to some of you that perhaps you've taken two steps back for every step forward. But you have also noticed also those of you who are the awakened human being, you've noticed this in your own individual process of coming to terms from the inside out of how this has been working for you. You still feel it now. How the mind with all of its control issues and all of those human emotions at its disposal to try to control you isn't just willing to give up control and turn it over completely to a heart that must be free, that must be free. See, that's the deal with the heart. And that's why the heart is such a threat to the mind if it's not serving it. The heart does perceive life from the bigger picture. It has at its disposal a variety of intuitive senses. Everything isn't just black and white. The heart gives you the freedom to feel into any situation you might be in, whether it's free-flowing or stuck, and gives you feedback in such a way that allows you to make conscious choices that are of your benefit, that serve you, that honor and respect you first. The moment you allow your heart to awaken, to be present, to allow it to be responsible for your life and ask your mind to be of service to the heart, it awakens a very different relationship with inside of you. It awakens you to the very presence of your own divine self, your own eternal self. And from that point forward, your life is never the same. Your life begins to change in the most profound way. You begin to realize that the majority of the thoughts that pass through your mind never originated from you. Of course, to understand that, to actually be conscious of that, you'd have to go inside and be aware of what's going on inside of you. Some of you even spent countless lifetimes trying to stop this internal dialogue. You became, what should we say, you became master meditators. And for a while that offered some relief. It seemed to work until you realized that it was but the mind reflecting on itself. That's not to say that meditation is wrong or bad or doesn't have some truly positive influences on your life. But no wonder you experience a state of calm when the mind is reflecting on itself. For those of you who have been following our insights over the last 25 years, along the way you started to feel, and perhaps some of you heard, the song of your own soul. It's a song that's based in joy. And as we are literally turning the corner here of how you are experiencing your life here on earth, 
you're making such a profound choice to choose joy to be your new standard. It represents a very sacred song that speaks directly to your heart. It's been a while for a lot of you since you've heard or felt this song. It can bring tears to your eyes when you reflect on how long it's been and how many lifetimes you've experienced. And even before Earth was created, how many adventures you were involved with in other realities, other dimensions, other planets, other galaxies. Where this song was missing. It wasn't necessarily a part of your own creations. But this very sacred song that speaks directly to your heart that will only step forward if you allow it to be free. You attach any conditions to how your heart is going to participate in your life now and it will regress. It will step back. It will allow you to continue playing games, allow you to be under the domain of your conditioned mind, if that is your choice. But we are addressing a small but very conscious group of people who have made a radically different choice at this time than most of humanity. You chose to awaken from all the conditioning you inherited. You chose to be free, not by pushing against those outside of you, doing battle with those outside of you. You went inside and discovered the source of the battle itself. And in that journey, in that experience, you're now beginning to hear this sacred song, or at least feel it. It is joy. It is indeed consciousness expressing itself as joy. Dear ones, consciousness and your heart are pretty good buddies. They're pretty, pretty much naturally compatible. Not a lot of friction, not a lot of resistance, not a lot of hurdles between consciousness and your own heart. They play together really well. Consciousness is always changing because life doesn't wait for the past to catch up. How many lifetimes have so many of you been here waiting your entire lifetime for humanity to catch up to what you already know, and what you already feel? This is the lifetime to set yourself free from the patterns of behavior that humanity has been seduced by, by the mind. Others might call or label that something else, putting the mind in some dark corner, creating an image of it that's, well, it's rather silly. It's still just the mind. Consciousness as well doesn't use time 
to define its reality simply because time is just too slow. But it is willing to play within the construct called time. You're feeling that now. You're feeling your own personal time and space doesn't feel the same way it used to because you've allowed more consciousness to be in your present reality. You've noticed that it's more of a struggle these days just to remember what month you're living in, to remember your own birthday, to remember the names of people you used to know or still do. Because there's so much going on, so much is happening in this fresh now moment that to allow the freshness of this clean, sovereign, now moment to actually exist in your present reality, you had to let go of your relationship to the mind that's addicted to your past and prides itself in trying to remember details. We understand that some of you find yourself feeling a little embarrassed that you'll be driving down the road having left your house with a clear thought that you were going grocery shopping and halfway down the road you haven't a clue why you're driving. You think maybe something's going on with your brain. You should go to the hospital, have something checked. But really, you're starting to experience reality that isn't stuck to any particular time and space. It doesn't mean you can't participate in the time and space that you are living in. But you now have the freedom to transcend the limitations of time and space. Without consciousness, the form you call your body, the form you call this planet, the presence of nature itself, none of that would exist. Consciousness exists in a very unique form as well. It exists in a very personal relationship for each of you. We have called this your eternal self. Each of you are starting to feel and develop a very personal relationship with this presence. Why? Your mind would ask, why? And your heart clearly says to your mind, because I am that too. Because it is also you, this eternal self. Those of us that reside in the etheric realms, we are witnessing now on a daily basis a growing number of awakened human beings who are consciously allowing this presence to actually coexist with your human identity in a type of human soul relationship. We find this incredible to watch as this unfolds in ways that has never been witnessed by any of us, ever, on any other planet, any other dimension. The beauty of this is that this eternal self, which is also you, has no agenda. 
to your mind? Is that a gift? Some of you are feeling that a mind, your mind, does have an agenda with your eternal self because there's nothing there to feed on. When you allow this presence in, as we are witnessing this happening, it doesn't look at what your mind thinks needs to be solved or fixed. It doesn't ask your human self to become more socially involved to help change the world. It relies 100% on the presence of consciousness to inspire change, to inspire change. And the greatest inspiration you can offer to the family of humanity is your own personal joy. Notice how the mind responds to that choice. The greatest service you can offer to the family of humanity is your own personal joy. There's no time, there's no room for solving problems, for drama, for getting stuck, for repeating yesterday. Consciousness allows choice. It doesn't impose itself on life. You've noticed that in your relationship with your own eternal self. Some of you have wished that your eternal self would impose its presence into your life, especially if you're in a place where you're really feeling stuck. And you get a little angry when you ask your eternal self, the presence of consciousness, to come in to help relieve you of whatever you're feeling that feels so uncomfortable. But it will only enter your life not because you're asking or demanding or commanding, because you allow it. That is how respectful consciousness is of life. And so there also must be a choice by humanity if change going forward is truly heart-based. But we know if you read the news, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see you have a lot of problems in front of you. Based on what we have just said, wouldn't that be the best news for your mind it's ever read? A lot of problems to solve. A lot of riddles to figure out. A lot of battles between one male nature and another. So clearly, new choices need to be made. And yet, any choice that honors the presence of your own consciousness must also be heart-based, which also means that love must be present. And that is why each of you are here. And because of you and your willingness to love you first, love is now present in ways that we have never witnessed. Oh, well, we know you would say, but this is going on in this part of the world and this is going on in this other part of the world. It just seems like it's going backwards. It's not looking very uplifted. But that's why you're here. To inspire from a place of joy those that might have gotten tired of the battle from the outside in. You made a bold choice to lay down your sword. 
to drop the label of a spiritual warrior and to go inside. And it was there that so many of you have found the cause of all of your external battles. This is not for the faint of heart going within. It is not. It will challenge all of your beliefs, as each of you know. But it must be done if true cooperation, true partnership, and true mutual respect from the outside in are truly to become the new standard on this planet. And of course, you would look at us and say, well, then this is going, this is not going to happen in one lifetime. No, it is not. It is not. Your job is to simply allow this presence, your joy, which is the presence of your eternal self, to coexist with your own human self and to be a part of of your day-to-day -day reality. This will give you, in return, an unfiltered view of life. One that is very natural to your heart. This represents, dear ones, your true freedom without all the distractions. It is here that the sacred reunion between human and spirit now exists. The opportunity isn't years ahead of you, it is here right now. That reunion is available to all of you simply because you allow it. And because you are allowing it more than we have ever witnessed at any other time, then we must thank you for your service to life. And it continues to be then our joy to be a part of what we are witnessing in support of the new human. All of our blessings, dear ones.